Hi guys, welcome to a new video. Uh, today I wanted to talk about building a computer for digital music production. Um, it's hard to give a general guide on what computer parts you need because it depends on the size of your music uh, project, numbers of VSTs and effects uh, you want to run at the same time. So in this guide I'm going to assume that you want the best, not the most expensive, but an average high-end PC for a digital audio workstation. Um, in this video I'm only going to go through the uh, computer specs, so I'm not going to talk uh, about sound cards, audio interfaces and software. I might do that in later videos, but not in this video. There are a lot of videos on the internet already addressing this topic, uh, but the reason I made this video is uh, one, because many of the videos are outdated, and two, many of the videos are incorrect or badly explained. Um, so we're going to go through the most important uh, computer parts first, and we'll start off with the uh, CPU. The CPU of the computer is the basis of all operations. Everything that is ca calculated in a computer is done in the CPU. Uh, so in simple terms you might refer to the CPU as sort of the, uh, uh, the heart of the computer. You have to remember that since the CPU requires a certain chipset for the motherboard, uh, it's a crucial step to pick the right one. Also, most CPUs only support a maximum of either 32, uh, 16 or 64 gigabyte of RAM. That means if you want to upgrade your RAM at a later point, you will have to make sure that your CPU supports the amount of RAM you want. So why is the CPU so important for a digital audio workstation? Um, if you're only going to go, if you if you're only going to record um, acoustic signals or, or on uh, multiple tracks, you don't need anything extreme. The only reason to spend a lot of money on a high-performance CPU is if you're going to use a lot of virtual instruments and effects. I'm going to give you some examples on uh, what a CPU does uh, and which operations that require a lot of CPU power in a uh, digital audio workstation. Um, Time-based effects such, such as reverb, delay, panning, phaser, chorus and so on. Um, Time-based effects require a lot of CPU because the output of such filters require a lot of calculations done by the CPU. Um, reverb, for example, uh, simply explained, is basically a, a signal duplicated multiple times, altered in pitch, amplitude, uh, and pan across the stereo field. In real time, this requires a lot of calculations uh, and is very heavy on the CPU. Uh, reverb is probably the one effect that demands the most CPU in a computer, uh, in a digital audio workstation. Delay and other time-based effects will also require a lot of CPU power. Um, if you intend to use a lot of time-based effects, at the same time you would want to consider a high-end CPU. Also, um, the music software or the sequencer, uh, also known as the music production software, uh, may have low minimum system requirements for it to run smoothly. However, the CPU power used by the sequencer depends on the workload of the project you, you, you're running. Um, that is, the amount of plugins and effects you are running at the same time, uh, the amount of audio tracks and operations uh, running at the same time. You should never choose a CPU based on the minimum requirements of a music software unless you're on a very tight budget. Multi-core processors versus dual or single core processors. A lot of people debate on this issue. Some people believe that multi-core is always better while others don't. The most important note here is that softwares are programmed differently. Uh, 
Some software benefit from multiple cores directly, but most, compu uh, but most consumer software does not. Um, as of today, there are no music software that benefit directly from multi-core CPUs, a sign of. Um, some software may be optimized for multi-core uh, CPUs, but that does not necessarily mean that they take advantage of the ability. So, um, having said that, I would still go for a uh, multi-core CPU, and the reason for this is quite simple. Um, multiple cores in a CPU makes the heat of the CPU spread out uh, evenly, or, or, or it will try to spread it out evenly to each core, uh, giving the CPU a lower average temperature. Uh, so in theory, lower temperatures increases performance. Also, most uh, up-to-date CPUs have multiple cores. Also, multi-core CPUs are probably the standard of the future anyway. So, which CPU should you go for? Um, it's hard to know exactly which CPU is right for you. Um, but in general, I would go for anything better than the Intel uh, 3770. Uh, if you want a decent CPU for music production, you're looking at a price of probably around 500 US dollars and up. Uh, you can use cpubenchmark.net as a reference. Here you can find the list of most used CPUs. So if you go on, on the webpage and go into the uh, high-end CPU section, uh, you can search for the Intel Core um, 3770 and then just look what's above and consider anything above uh, the 3770. So that's my recommendation anyway, but it, it, it always depends on uh, what you intend to do with the music software. So now we have talked a little bit about the CPU and now I will talk a little bit about the RAM of the computer. The RAM, also known as random access memory, um, is simply explained the memory of the computer. For a DAW, it, uh, this is probably the most important part of the computer. You can think of the RAM um, as a small and super fast courier service between the hard drive and the processor. The reason why you will need a good quality RAM is that modern music production relies a lot on sample, uh, samples, sample banks, uh, virtual instruments and audio loops. Basically, anything that relies on audio samples to produce sound uh, requires a, a decent RAM. Whenever an audio sample is loaded into the music software, the audio is temporarily stored in the RAM, making it faster to load the next time your computer needs to use it. A good example on this is Native Instruments Contact. When you load up an instrument library in Contact, most of the samples are stored in the RAM uh, to achieve a smooth playback without latency. If you have a slow RAM, you will need to wait longer for the instrument library to load up, and if you have a fast RAM, the instrument will load up faster. So, how much RAM do you need? Uh, well, this is hard to know because it depends on your project. If you're running a lot of sample libraries, such as Contact, um, you would want a lot of RAM. Uh, having said that, you have to think for yourself and be realistic. I would never buy uh, RAM with any less storage than 16 GB if you're a serious music producer, then that's what you want to go for, uh, or better. 32 GB might be right for you, but this can be quite expensive. Um, 64 GB is extreme and probably not necessary. Uh, if you need a 64, uh, if you need 64 gigabyte of RAM, you are probably a professional and you probably already have a very specific reason uh, why you need it. So what about the speed of the RAM? Storage is one thing, speed is another. Um, a fast RAM 
means less waiting for sample libraries to load, faster switching between applications and faster workflow. I would definitely go for a DDR4 RAM until a better standard is released. Uh, now, don't get too stu stuck up on, in the uh, megahertz of the RAM, uh, because the speed of the RAM very often gets cancelled out by the latency of the RAM, so there would not be a significant difference between a RAM with 1600 uh, megahertz and a RAM with uh, 2400 megahertz. Um, stick to well-known brands such as Crucial or Corsair and uh, make sure they fit the motherboard and are compatible with the CPU. So now we have talked about um, CPU and RAM and now uh, I want to talk a little bit about uh, hard drive storage. The hard drive is probably what's going to make the most difference in terms of speed and workflow in a DAW. Uh, when it comes to the hard drive there are basically two alternatives, a traditional drive and an SSD drive. Here there is no question, SSD drive, uh, drives is a lot faster than traditional drives and uh, I would most definitely go for an SSD if not both. If you keep your operating system, such as Windows, and your music software of choice uh, installed on an SSD drive, you will have a much faster uh, system in total. Loading audio samples, kits, loops and instruments on an SSD it's mu it is much faster than loading from a regular hard drive. So the only downside is that most consumer SSDs have limited storage capacity. So if you're like me and have a one or two terabytes of uh, samples, loops and instruments, you will probably need multiple drives. So the way I would go about it is to have an SSD with the OS and the music software and then have an additional traditional hard drive for more storage if, if I need it. So when it comes to storage, you should buy a hard drive with the most space that you can afford. And the reason why I'm saying this is that you will save money by buying a large hard drive right away, uh, rather than buying a small hard drive today, having to buy another hard drive at a later point. Also, if you buy many smaller drives, you will run out of SATA ports on your motherboards. Uh, unless you are a fan of external drives. So now we have talked about the CPU, we've talked about RAM, um, we talked about hard drive storage, but what about the video card? Now this is actually where you want to save money. A decent video card is required for a DAW to run smoothly, uh, but you won't need anything exceptional even if you're composing music for video. Uh, the reason for this is that most of the music applications used today are in 2D rather than 3D. A high-end graphics uh, card is mostly needed for 3D materials such as computer games or animation software. Uh, I would recommend a video card from NVIDIA or AMD but don't go overboard here. Uh, rather spend your money on a good CPU, a good RAM and uh, a fast hard drive. So at the end of the day, the most important part of your computer is the CPU, the RAM and the hard drive. Um, the motherboard and the video card does matter to a certain extent, uh, but you should rather prioritize the CPU, uh, RAM and hard drive instead. So if you have any questions regarding this or any comments, you can leave them um, in the comments below the video and I will try to um, help out or, or reply to them. Um, thanks for watching the video and I'll see you next time.